Hi everyone, it's Miriam from Miriam's Nature. The tools video I posted a few days ago, which I will link in the description box below this video, has gotten a lot of positive responses, both here and on Facebook. And by far, the star tool was the plastic fork. Oh my gosh, I fear an upcoming fork shortage due to all of us and our newfound love for this humble utensil. So, what does that mean? Well, we can't rest on our laurels. We have to see if we can take this a step further. So, I went and I bought these. Hair picks. I got these for $2.50 because my store was having a buy one get one sale. I'm also pretty darn sure that you can get these at dollar stores. So, the goal for today is to use these and this crazy tool that I made with a piece of styrofoam and some sewing pins that I beheaded to make something cool. Now, I have a friend, Anne, who makes these amazing marbled scarves and clothing, and she was kind enough to talk me through some techniques. And now I'm going to try them and show you what I think I learned. Before we start, let me explain my kooky tool. In the marbling world, this is called a bouquet comb, just like bouquet of flowers. And what it is, is two parallel rows of pins. Now the pins are spaced equally apart. Now, I drew this by hand, so I apologize if it's not perfect, but let's pretend that these are exactly the same size spacing here. And the only difference between this row and that row is that this row isn't directly behind this one, it's half a space over. Kind of like the chairs in an auditorium, same thing. Now, the space between these two rows so in other words, this space down here is probably important, but I didn't ask that. So I made it this far apart, but I suspect that if I made another one of these with the rows further apart, that it might have a different effect. So I might make another one of these too. Like I said, this is just a piece of styrofoam, some pins, sewing pins. They had those little balls on the end. I took the little balls off and I just push these pins through the piece of styrofoam and then put some hot glue at the base just to keep them, you know, really well secured in there. Now, you may have a better idea on how to make something like this, and if you do, definitely share it in the comments below. This only took me a couple of minutes to make, but there might be a faster way. Now, let's make some art. I gave it some thought and ran this bouquet tool along a canvas and realized that I was not so comfortable with the sharp edges. So I remade it and left the balls on the pins this time. By the way, I spaced the pins half an inch apart and the two rows are three quarters of an inch apart. We'll see what that does. For marbling to work, well, it's important that every speck of the area that you want to marble is wet with paint. Any dry spot will not take the pattern. The pattern will just break up there. So I'm going to lay down a nice wet layer of white paint. And I choose to use white because it makes it easy for you guys to see the colors on top. Something else that I found out about um, a pick is that it's really good for spreading an even layer of paint. If you kind of go back and forth a bunch of times, it kind of really flattens the paint out well and evenly. So I'm kind of loving that because I used to always use a paintbrush for that and this is just so much better. I'm just going to now lay down a random pattern of dots. I just grabbed whatever colors were nearby. I don't think it really matters. Choose whatever colors make you happy. I think that's enough to get a pattern going. So I'm going to lay the ends of the pick down onto the tile and I'm going to pull 
toward myself for this particular move. And I want to try to do it as straight as I possibly can. Ooh, well, I tipped the tile, but that's so pretty already. I mean, it almost can stop right there. But what's going to be fun about this is that we get to add more and more. Now for the next pass, what I have to do is take the, the pick and run the comb the, in the other direction. And I don't want to lay the teeth down where they were before, but I want to lay them over half a step. So where I kind of did the little blip, that'll get all funky, but that's part of the fun of this is getting extra interesting details, I guess. And you see what happens now? Now you've got kind of like a double direction. You can stop at any step of this. I'm just going to take this to its conclusion, but you may think it's pretty now and stop and it's perfectly fine. But let's see what else we can do. The next step is to run the comb in this direction. And then just like before, we're going to go in the opposite direction and we're going to move the teeth half a step over. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Wow. And the last thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to use the funky tool and I'm going to run that tool here and I'm going to zigzag it down this way. Oh, wow. You can use this as a small element in the middle of something or it can be your main pattern. Or what you can do is let this dry. And once you've let it dry, you can use it as a background for something, you know, like maybe you want to add a silhouette to it or paint a flower or add text. It's all up to you. Okay, so I've reset and I'm going to try a tighter pattern. So I'm going to start out the same way as before. in this direction once and then I'm going to come back in the opposite direction but with the teeth half a step over and then I'm going to come this way and because I'm left-handed for some things <laughs> I'm going to just push the other way rather than drag the other way because I have better control with this hand. And I'm going to follow just one. Okay, so now I've got that pattern. And then what I did was take an old comb and I cut every other tooth to make it shorter so that it wouldn't affect the paint. Because I tried dragging this through some paint and the teeth were too close. So what was happening was that the paint was bunching up in the comb and pulling almost like I was doing a swipe. Which could be interesting doing a, comb, a swipe with a comb. Maybe we should all try that too. But anyway, I wanted to do a tighter pattern. So I'm going to try to see what this does. So pretty. I just, I can't get over the detail and how you really get to see all the fine little lines. Marbling is really quite pretty. Here's a close up of that. And I'm going to take it a step further and come down in the same direction but one half step over. Super detailed, super pretty. For the last step, we're going to use the bouquet tool again. 
and we're going to lay it down, pins down on the canvas or tile. And as we pull it toward ourselves, make sort of an S pattern back and forth. And then the result is these lovely little bunches, kind of like little bouquets. I hope that you got some fun ideas to add to your fluid painting bag of tricks. I think that marbling lends itself to so many possibilities. The color combinations are endless. The patterns you create make great backgrounds, awesome paint skins for jewelry or other projects, or just as an element in a fluid painting. If you come up with some fun ideas, definitely share them in the comments below and also let me know what you thought of this. If you liked it, I would truly appreciate your kind thumbs up and please share this with your friends, groups, anyone that can benefit from added techniques. And finally, remember to click subscribe so that you don't miss a tip, trick, or technique for yourself. I promise there's lots more to come. Now, go let your creative nature shine. May the paints be kind to you. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye now.